Welcome everyone who joined us uh, so far. My name is Jerzy Zewitski. I'm one of the directors in Digital Home Systems. Uh, I think most of us know me very well. Uh, we have the pleasure to, to meet. Uh, nevertheless, for those people who uh, just joined us uh, recently, a uh, quick introduction about what we're going to do today and during the next uh, few uh, weeks. So Digital Home System uh, is uh, running a series of uh, webinars uh, with a specific focus on uh, KNX technology and Comfort Click KNX and uh, Z Wave uh, gateways. Last week we had an uh, introduction to KNX run by Ian Harding from ABB. Um, and Ian will be also running uh, three following webinars next week, following week, and on 6th of May, uh, always on Wednesday, uh, usually at 2 p.m., uh, occasionally 3 p.m. You will be notified by our newsletters about uh, specific dates and uh, links to join this webinar. Uh, so stay tuned. You always can check us out on digitalhomesystems.com.au. We have uh, a training program page with uh, all webinars listed. So for your information, this is what I'm presenting now. We are today at the webinar number two, uh, an introduction to Comfort Click, Canix, and z -Web gateways. Uh, which will be provided by David Boban from Comfort Click. David is actually located in Europe. Uh, right now, he will be speaking from Ljubljana. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, David, for joining us so early in the morning, your time. I'll yep. hand over to you in a second, just uh, for those people who haven't uh, had a chance to work with us yet, uh, being on a call. A quick introduction, uh, who is Digital Home System. Um, we are the main distributor of Z-Wave technology in Australia in, in, and in this part of the uh, region. Um, we also are distributor of KNX and KNX uh, compatible products. One of them is uh, a great range of uh, comfortably gateways, visualization tools, which we'll be talking uh, about today. Um, Digital systems not only distribute products, but will also uh, provide a um, customer-focused um, services. We provide professional te technical support, We're providing uh, lots of training programs, including this series of uh, webinars, knowledge transfer, and also uh, provide referral program for installers who work with us. Um, there's a lot of brands we uh, distribute. One of them is of um, We distribute from Canix perspective, um, ABB line of Kenx products. Um, that's on top of uh, usual Z-Wave uh, products based on Vera platform, Fibaro platform, uh, Kubino, Remotech, and many other um, good quality Z-Wave products. So with this introduction, I think we are um, pretty much spot on, on to start the main part of the webinar, uh, which will be an introduction to Comfort Click, Kenix, and Z-Wave gateways. Um, David, over to you, and okay. uh, I'll switch off for now. Thank you. Okay, so thank you to this uh, for this introduction. Um, uh, we're going to start my uh, uh, presentation regarding uh, Comfort Click and uh, BOS. Uh, the first part, uh, mostly the data that I'm going to be talking today is going to be regarding our uh, basic introduction, basically how everything is working, how everything is done. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we're also going to have a little short Q&A. So if you have any questions during uh, the whole presentation, you can either write it down or even better, write it down somewhere else and I'll try to get it at the end. So uh, we don't get sidetracked or uh, lose track of what I'm talking. Of course, uh, I would like to thank you all of you that are joining me today to this presentation. I hope that all of you are, uh, of course, doing well, staying inside, staying healthy. And I also thank you all for taking your time today and listening to the presentation that I have uh, prepared for you. So to give a little brief introduction of who we are and what we do, we are, like uh, my colleague said, we are Comfort Click. Uh, we are a software and hardware developer for home automation, home uh, building. We were established way back in 2008, so we have more than a decade of experience, not just with KNX projects, but the home automation projects in general. Uh, so that's how we kind of built this 
uh, ecosystem or this application that we have uh, that, that's called BOS. They're going to be also explaining later on how it's actually working. And uh, of course, we are uh, headquartered here in Ljubljana, Slovenia, in Europe. Uh, besides being just the software and hardware developer for home automation, we also provide full consulting to our clients. We provide uh, additional planning if required, uh, any smart system configuration, and of course, we provide full technical support uh, to our clients as well. Uh, we have a very, very well, how should I say, built out uh, ticketing system. We also have a very, very active uh, public forum where actually people can chat with each other, provide solutions and examples and so on. We, of course, also members of uh, the KNX organization and the Z-Wave Alliance. So how the, how just a little, this is the, the, the basic, uh, how should I say, structure of BOS is you have your uh, BOS server or BOS, con BOS controller. I'll probably bounce around with these two words uh, quite frequently during this presentation. Uh, so BOS server or BOS controller is basically just a hardware uh, this could be either uh, our hardware that we have also of course provide or any other pc laptop that you might have uh, that's actually running our uh, bos server and uh, then on this bos server you then connect all of your devices uh, that could be knx z-wave you'll also be showing you later on the whole the whole list of the devices that we support and you can have just one simple device to connect all of your other devices to have the seamless experience and seamless communication between all of them. And then you would also have, of course, your uh, client application that can be installed also on your Windows PC or also on your uh, phone or tablets to then control these devices uh, locally or externally or any other way. Uh, if you go on the web page, you should get all the information that you're ever going to need uh, regarding BOS, regarding our software, how everything is done, and so on. And the basic applications that you would require uh, to start building your visualization and to start integrating your devices and creating the visualization would be our BOS server, our BOS configurator, and at the end, for your clients, uh, you would use our BOS client application. So. All of the applications that I'm going to be showing you today and everything that I'm going to be talking about, everything is available on our webpage. Everything can be downloaded for completely for free for you to test it out. Uh, there's actually no limitations uh, regarding um, the whole configurator, uh, the, the whole applications. Everything is, uh, even if you're using the free trial version, everything is there for, for you to test it out, to see how it works. And if you have any questions or if you require any help, you can, of course, either contact me or anyone else from our team i'll be more than glad to help you but we also and uh, not just provide the full technical support we have an abundance of information uh regarding all the devices all of our tasks we have a lot of different examples and so on and also going to be later showing you um how easy it is basically to just go to our webpage, uh find that additional information how quickly it is to uh, simply download an example, import it into your BOS, and you can have uh, your devices working. So the first application is our BOS service monitor. So this is just the application that kind of runs in the background of your system, that kind of reserves your PC, your laptop, uh, any hardware uh, to be a BOS server, and then actually allows your other applications uh, to connect to your PC. Uh, you can also, of course, connect remotely uh, with, with the configurator to your PC. So this is just an, a, the background application that's running on your machine. The next, and probably the biggest application that I'm going to be talking today, and if you're going to be using BOS, is our BOS configurator. So this is the application that we're going to be using to uh, create the visualization, uh, integrate our ETS project, create your KNX project, uh, add all of your other devices, uh, if you might be using, uh, also create your tasks, schedules, and so on. So this would be the main application uh, that I'm going to be showing you today. And the last but not least is our BOS client application. Um, in your client application, so this is, exact, this is exactly the same application that you would... Uh, use on your phone, your tablet to basically connect to your controller. And once, of course, your configuration is done and your visualization is done, you can then, of course, use it to turn all of your devices on and off, run the scene, schedules, um, play around as much as you want. I have, of course, a couple of pre-built rooms for us uh, that I'm going to be showing you later on uh, as well how you can use. But uh, we need to, uh, of course, uh, 
play around with our configurator first a little bit. So once you open your BOS configurator, you will be able to see on the, the middle of the screen the list of all the controllers that you have added into your profile. So as you can see, of course, you can also uh, connect to your uh, server, not just locally, but we also provide a full uh, connection from outside, of course. So you can actually have, uh, let's say, your configurator installed on your uh, office, and you have, of course, clients all over around the world. Of course, you don't need to drive there every time there is a technical support. Uh, remote connection is, of course, possible with our BOS. And you can actually simply, if you want to add a new controller into BOS, you go here on the top right and you click Add. So there's a couple of different ways you can add your controller into BOS. And the first and probably the most popular way is to use our access ID. So this access ID is created and is used when you first install your Windows Sur uh, or BOS uh, service monitor, your BOS configurator, and you first log into the controller. And you need to, of course, register it uh, to our system so you can create your license information and so on. And when you do create this license information, this is where you would, that, that is where you're going to create your access ID. So it's a unique name. Uh, of your server or your, of your controller, of course, with a unique uh, login credentials. And this access ID would actually go through our cloud system and connect automatically to the correct IP address that you might have. So you don't actually need to know, uh, of course, the direct IP of your controller. If the controller has a dynamic IP, it'll, of course, change. And using this access ID will then uh, automatically connect to the correct IP each time, either locally or outside. The next, the next possible way is to use our manual configuration. So this is actually a direct IP uh, communication or connection. Uh, you can, you can either, of course, use uh, local IP or external IP. A uh, good thing about your local uh, addresses is also you can actually use this find button, and it will actually locate all of the servers that is in that are in your local network, and you can actually just simply select it uh, from the list that you might want it. Uh, of course, uh, put in your lo uh, login credentials, and then you can also connect uh, locally. Uh, another way you can actually connect is also by using your gateway address. So this was also added recently into BOS to provide even more secure option uh, to connecting remotely to a controller without actual any need of port forwarding. So you would simply uh, put in your uh, gateway address uh, and then connect remotely uh, to the controller. So once you select your controller from the list, this will be the welcome screen that you would see when you connect to the server. So as you can see on the left side, our configuration is built in a configuration tree, which means that we have your main node and then would have a couple of sub nodes. Uh, in this case, we have our building node, which would be our main node, where you would see all the license information. If I open it, uh, there's, if there's going to be any new updates, of course, they're going to be available here. We do try to keep in touch with our clients, see what's currently working or not working, any new features that are added are, of course, here available under our updates. Of course, you can also change your network settings for your wireless. You can change your region, of course, also. So any uh, translations and so on uh, is then uh, tweaked using this region. You can, and you can also uh, reboot or shut down uh, the controller. Um, the next major sub node that we have is our general sub node so if i expand my general sub node you'll be able to see it also provides additional settings additional information about uh just the general information for the controller so under users you would have all of the devices that are currently connected to the server so you can actually select each device and for instance you can assign a certain visualization to it uh, you can, of course, use notifications and so on uh, for these users as well. All the notifications, email settings, maybe some text messages and so on can be set here under uh, this messaging uh, node. VOS also has a built-in translation tool. So this is especially useful uh, for people that have clients that require multiple uh, languages in their configuration, especially useful, for, let's say, for hotels, where we have clients all over the world require different languages. And you can simply add a new language here in this translation tool, and then you can actually translate it uh, to another language. And for clients, on the for the client side, it's even easier because on the client, they can actually just go here, they open the, the application. This could, of course, be on their phone. And they can simply go here under settings menu and they can change the language to something else. And the whole configuration is going to be 
translate it to another language with just a couple of clicks. So for a client side, it's very, very easy and very simple to use. A good thing about BOS and the whole general how the visualization is done is that we provide fully customizable uh, visualizations. So what this means, we can, of course, if I, uh, if I expand just a couple of uh, images that we have uh, in that, that are built in into BOS, you can see we have hundreds and hundreds of different images, icons that you can use uh, in your visualization. But we also support fully customizable images. So you can either download our image that we have here, let's say this car for a lot of car charging. You can either download this and tweak it around. We can play around with it. Uh, and then re-upload it, or you can actually upload your custom image. You can upload your custom logos, maybe custom backgrounds or layouts of your buildings, and you can actually use them later uh, in your visualization to create a very customizable uh, visualization for the client. Uh, we also, you can also use the current sun position uh, according to your, uh, of course, your position uh, to use it uh, later on as a trigger. For instance, I also have an example for you prepared today, how you can actually use the position of the sun uh, to trigger some devices and so on. If I go here under time, you can also uh, set your uh, working days, your vacation days, holidays and so on. So, and all, all of the holidays, vacation days uh, can, of course, later be used as a trigger uh, uh, in a schedule, for instance, or a scene. So you can actually use these days to have a specific uh, task uh, on that specific day. We also have a built-in weather system or weather API that we currently use. So this provides just a basic general uh, weather information status and a little short uh, weather forecast. So your clients can also have this little bit of a weather information available for them as well. Uh, we, of course, also support uh, uh, voice control of the building. So we both we support both uh, Alexa and Google Smart Home to control your building using the voice. So we have skills for both of these devices. So uh, your clients can also uh, use these two as well. Uh, we also support RPC service. Uh, so uh, you can actually have custom, uh, you can also use BOS uh, to bring it into another API. Uh, you can use ITTT services. Just uh, like two weeks ago, we had a YouTube uh, live stream where I showed how powerful and how easy it is to use this RPC service. And we, we I think we used uh, IFTTT services to uh, create a simple tasks and send and receive HTTP commands. Uh, we are also planning on integrating uh, MQTT soon, and we're also currently working on adding a ZigBee driver as well. So all of these features are also going to be uh, available on our uh, software. So the next, the next major node that I'm going to be showing you today is going to be our devices node. So if I select my devices, right click and select add, you'll be able to see all the list of the devices that we currently support. So as you can see, uh, the list is quite big. We don't support just KNX and Z-Wave. We, of course, support uh, multiple different devices uh, from alarm systems such as Paradox, Satel, uh, DSC. Uh, we also have uh, our, uh, let's say, our, your sound system is also supported. We have Sonos for any industrial devices. Perhaps also we have Modbus and Bacnet. Uh, also, smart TVs are supported. We have uh, support for LG TV and Samsung TV. And if you're project has uh, IP cameras, those can also be added into BOS and then uh, the camera picture can also be displayed. And the whole, idea, the whole idea of BOS and our configurator is to basically communicate uh, between these, the communication between all of these devices. In most cases, you would require to have each application for all of these devices. And if you combine them all together, you're stuck with 10, 15 applications that need to be running to have this communication between devices. Uh, but in BOS, you would just have our BOS configurator and you would use simple tasks uh, to communicate with these devices and, and have the seamless experience um, with this the whole communication. Uh, so you can actually use uh, Z-Wave, KNX to communicate with each other. Uh, you can also, of course, uh, use many number of the other devices that we have supported. Uh, since today, and most of you today that are joining me today are working with KNX, and I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to simply select my KNX from this list, and I'm, and I'm going to click Add. So once I add my KNX node, you'll be able to see that the KNX has been added under my devices. I also have a couple of 
other devices here in my configuration for the cameras and I have uh, an older KNX project. I have my Sonos speaker that I have here in the office. Uh, I have a number of Z-Way devices that I also have uh, prepared uh, to show you later in, in an example. But uh, to go back to our KNX example, uh, we all know that there's a couple of different ways you can connect your KNX uh, devices. You can connect via IP, you can connect via USB, serial, name it. Uh, so the, all the connection types are supported here by simply selecting connection type and then switching to uh, another connection type if required. But during this uh, 10 year experience that I said uh, that I said earlier, we have with our billing automation and so on, we do know how easy uh, KNX projects can get complicated. We know that uh, at the end of a KNX project, you might have a large number of uh, KNX devices, KNX group addresses, and so on. So for this purpose, we created our own ETS import wizard. So this means that you would simply create your ETS project, create your KNX project, and then uh, at the end, you can export it via XML or ESF file. And then you will be able to see how easy it is to import the whole KNX project into BOS. So to do this, I can go here under ETS import, import data from ETS. I open this function and I find my project that I have prepared and I open it up. And you'll be able to see all the group addresses that I have in my project are now listed here in this import wizard. So as you can see, in most cases, more than all, almost all of them are going to be added in automatically. Uh, but in some cases that you see here, the ones that are colored red need to be added in manually. So if you have just the, the basic knowledge of ETS and KNX, the, this import uh, step is very, very easy. You can simply select the devices that are not imported and you can right click it. So in this case, let's say this is system parameter and time. I can right click. Um, and select DPT time. And like I said, if you have just the basic information about the ETS, this is very, very simple because of course we use the exact same data types. You can of course select uh, the devices. Even easier way to select the devices is I can actually click my mouse and I can drag it and I can multiple select different devices. So if I go very quickly to my weather and I'm also gonna add our shades in, because we're going to be using them later on in our visualization. And I'm just going to add them in. And of course, you would go through the whole project. You would add uh, the devices in. And the next step, the next step that we need to do is, of course, we need to receive feedback from uh, our KNX devices. We all know that you have in KNX, you have your group address, and then you have your status address to receive uh, what's currently going on with the device. And you can see here, we have our lights on and off. And then we have our lights on and off status. And what I actually can do is I can actually select my status addresses. I right click, I copy this address, and I can actually paste it here under on and off group address. And I simply select paste the status address. And you can see all my statuses have been pasted here under this group address. So now immediately once this uh, KNX project is imported, we would automatically receive all the feedback that's going on uh, with all the devices. You can, of course, go to the whole configuration, do this for all of your devices. This is not necessary for today's, um, for this presentation. I'm just going to uh, copy my shades statuses as well so we have our shades in but of course you you can go through all this uh the whole configuration uh add the statuses in add your uh types in and then at the end once you're once you're satisfied you can click next and you'll be able to see a bos added 70 new devices here and when i click next in the next step now I actually tell, and I can actually define and tell BOS what this device is. In the first step, we simply imported our KNX project, we import our devices, and now we're gonna tell BOS. Now, if I go here under lights, and we're actually gonna tell BOS, this is a lamp or this is a light. So I can again select my lights on and off, and I can right click, select template, and select from my R8 templates uh, list that we have prepared and select my lamp. And once I do this, you'll be able to see that my template changed to lamp. The image has automatically been changed to a bulb. And of course my unit, since this is a on and off uh, device, my unit changed uh, from 
unknown to on and off. And I can, of course, multiple select a couple of these devices. And I can also, of course, tweak around and change the image of this device. And let's say I'm just going to change it this, this to this chandelier icon that I have. So again, you would go through this to the, for your um, the whole configuration. Uh, I'm just going to go here now and I'm going to add my shades in, select my templates and do uh, for shades. And if, if you check here under my templates and units, instead of the, of course, being a lamp, have this icon and being on and off, we have now shades. We have the shade icon. And since we uh, most likely you're going to be controlling our shades from zero to 100%, our unit has also been changed uh, from zero to 100%. Um, so once, of course, you're satisfied and you, you've done for this your whole configuration, we can simply close the import wizard. And now I can actually expand my KNX node. And you'll be able to see that all the group addresses that we just added have been actually put into uh, all the subfolders. So if you have your ETS project very well built under your subfolders and so on, the group addresses in BOS are going to be put in exactly the same way. So there's no additional conf confusion. You know all where you know where all your uh, group addresses are. You can then actually uh, it's very easy uh, for your group addresses to be accessible. Of course, every group address once it's been added to BOS can of course be tweaked around. You can select it here from the list. You can of course change the add uh, address status address. You can also of course change the type. So this could be any number of different devices. You can also change uh, change the image, change the unit, and so on. So once your KNX project is added into your uh, configuration, it's very, very simple to now start creating your visualization. So to create your visualization, uh, BOS uses a very, very simple, very powerful uh, tool that we have, which is a simple drag and drop technique. So I can actually select my group address that I added earlier, select living room ceiling, and drag it uh, into our blank frame. And I click Add. And you'll be able to see that now my devices has been added into uh, my frame. So now if I open my client application and go here under home, I can actually start controlling the light on and off. So as you can see, it's very, very simple, very, very easy to create a simple visualization. If I were to be connected to a KNX bus, bus, this device would already be turning on and off. And of course, since we added our status addresses in as well, I would receive full feedback from this device as well. <clears throat> Mostly, this is not as appealing as one might think, just to have this huge button in the middle of the screen. Uh, for this purpose, we usually create uh, frames. So what I, what, by that I mean, you can simply go here under your blank uh, configurator, right click on the background and add a frame. So once I add a frame, and if I drag and drop the exact same way my group address and put it in this frame, you'll be able to see that it has now been added into this frame and it's now aligned automatically. It looks a little bit better. It's uh, more uh, transparent. We can also, let's say, add our uh, title here. So lights, for instance, a title popped up. We can also, of course, add another frame and add our shades in. Just gonna add two shades. We can also add this title, shades. So all the information settings for each frame is seen here on the right side. So if I select this frame, you'll be able to see the information for this frame and this one for this frame. And of course, all the buttons that are in Configurator and in the visualization can be tweaked through uh, with, uh, how should I say this, limitless uh, limitless way. <laughs> we can actually tweak uh, all of our images. Uh, I'm not gonna go into too deep. We have, of course, a separate video prepared just for this on our webpage, how to, change every button, how to change every color, every text that you see here on each button can be changed, colors, uh, even uh, the orientation, uh, we can round it up. Uh, it's very, very simple, very, very easy to use uh, to, to just to change the settings here that I have on the right. Very quickly, simply change the text color of this button. Uh, so it's very, very easy, very simple to use. And in a couple of seconds, everything is of course refreshed live uh, in our client. And now if you can, your client can already start controlling the devices, turning down the shades and so on. So building the, the ba a very basic visualization is done very, very easy and very, very simply by just simply using our drag and drop technique uh, to basically drag and drop uh, your devices into the visualization. 
happens. So your KNX project has been added. Your simple visualization has, already, has been created. The next thing we can do, we can actually add a little bit of our automation. Uh, we can add a couple of tasks and, and we can actually start communicating uh, between these devices. So to do add another task, I can simply go here under tasks, right click, select my add, and you'll be able to see the list of the tasks that we currently support. So we support from very simple basic data logs uh, for uh, logging your information and displaying them later on. I also have an example for you prepared today. Uh, to very simple basic scenes, schedules, uh, any operating time, for instance, or movement detector, to more complex tasks as well, such as some calculations, some bit converters. Uh, we can also add our present simulators, um, minim minimum max and average values uh, calculations. And we also have our uh, very powerful program task that I also have, uh, I'll also be showing you later on uh, how versatile and how very useful this uh task can be for just this simple presentation i'm just going to add one scene in <clears throat> so i'm just going to name it lights on and add this scene in and once i add this scene you'll be able to see that i have it i have the scene now uh here uh under my tasks and to create a scene it's exactly the same way as we created our visualization. So it's very, very simple, very easy. I can open up my KNX again, go here under lights, since this is a lights on scene, and I can simply click and drag my devices in. Of course, I'm not limited to just KNX in this case. So I can add a couple of KNX devices and I can actually go here and select my Z-Wave device. And I can, let's say this is Fibaro single switch. I can add it in. Uh, I can actually, of course, add a dimmer, for instance, add this dimmer value. And you can go, I can either also add a, let's say, Modbus relay. And this could be any device. This could be a alarm or just a light. This, there's no limitations, basically, what kind of device you can add here. And once all the devices are added, I can now uh, tweak uh, the value. So this is a lights on scene. I'm just going to simply select all of my on and off devices. I can, of course, multiple select the same way as I did in the ETS import wizard. Multiple select, set value, and set to true. And I'm also gonna change this dimmer to 100%. So you can see it's very, very simple. In a matter of a minute or two, you have your full scene created. Multiple different devices are in. And with a simple click of a button, multiple different devices are gonna be uh, controlled. It's even simpler to, to create another scene. Let's add a lights off. Just to give an example, I can actually copy all the devices that are in this scene. So copy, and I can go under my lights off, and I can paste them in. And all the, the only thing that I need to do is, since this is a lights off scene, I'm just going to change the value from true to false. And now we have two very simple but very useful scenes created, and I can actually add them into our uh, uh, configuration. Uh, the best way that we recommend is uh, to add your scene is to create a bottom menu. So you can actually select your uh, frame. And if, we, if the settings for the frame are here on the right, I can actually enable my bottom menu. That the true, and you'll be able to see that an invisible uh, frame has been created at the bottom. And if I drag and drop my scenes in, You'll be able to see it's very, very transparent, very, very visible that this is not a another device. This is actually a scene. So if I go to my client application, you'll be able to see that if I click now lights off, and of course, all the devices that are in the scene are going to be turning off. And if I click device on, all the lights in the scene are going to turn on. So you can also, also uh, allow additional, uh, how should I say, uh, freedom to your client because actually all of these scenes that I created can also be tweaked around with the client. So if I select, I can, if I click the scene, the scene is going to trigger. But if I click and hold on the scene, so click and hold, you'll be able to see that the scene has been opened up and the client can go and they can play around and they can actually tweak the scene. And the next time the scene is going to be triggered, some something different is going to happen. So especially useful if you create your visualization, create the whole project for your client, and a couple of months later the client says, "Oh, I'm not too satisfied with the scene. I want to change it up." There's actually they, they can do the, this little configuration themselves. They can actually play around with the scenes, tweak them around, and so on. So 
some features can also be uh, used by our clients as well. The next way our communication between devices is done uh, is let's say I'm just going to create a simple uh, thermostat thermostat task. I'm going to add it in. So what thermostat task does, it takes an input value and then basically controls a heater or any heating uh, system that you might have. So if I go here, select my thermostat, and if I go under input value, I can select my, let's say, Z-Wave that I have here uh, from Cubino, our thermostat. I'm just going to select this temperature value. So this is going to be my input value from Z-Wave. Uh, we're going to be seeing our current temperature value. And then for output value, I'm going to be turning on and off our heater. So, of course, all of the heater is going to turn on and off according to your uh, heating and cooling settings. But this is one way you can see how easy it is to communicate with each other uh, from, of course, different devices communicating with each other. So uh, it's very, very simple. Um, it's very, very easy. Now, uh, once I add my thermostat into uh, our tasks, you can actually see that I have a subfolder already built in. So if I open my frame here, you'll be able to see that this thermostat actually comes in with a pre-built visualization. So not, of, not all of our tasks come with this, but a couple of our tasks are actually come with this pre-built visualization. So it's also very, very easy for a system creators to simply select this pre-built visualization, copy it, and I can go here under my current one that I created, and I can paste it in. And of course, this visualization can be tweaked, can be played around, you can of course add different uh, devices, different values here. Uh, and if I open my my currently created visualization, you'll be able to see that we have our devices, shades, and now we have our thermostat that we can play around, change the value, and so on. Uh, next way we can communicate uh, between our devices would be using our program tasks. I, I mentioned this earlier that uh, this program task is probably mostly used a uh, very, very versatile task that we have in BOS. It allows you to have any number of triggers in your configuration. It can actually control multiple different devices, multiple different tasks uh, within your configuration. So if I select my trigger, this is very, very simple. I can use, let's say, I can, okay, I can go back to my Z-Wave. I can select my, let's say, uh, let's say flush uh, relay uh, switch. Uh, when this switch is set to true, I can actually set value to our KNX light, for instance. So we can actually use Z-Wave devices to turn KNX devices on. I can, of course, do multiple different devices. Once this, once this flush dimmer is uh, flush relay is set to true, I can also um, turn up the volume of my speaker. I can uh, show a certain frame, for instance. I can uh, control basically any number of devices. I can also control other ZUA devices and so on. So there's there's almost unlimited amount of options you can do uh, with this program task with a very simple trigger. Of course, you can also add a if sentence here. So let's say this flush, uh, when this uh, switch is turned on, and if the temperature or uh, the brightness in the room is, um, is I don't know, a certain number, something different is going to happen. So you can play around with this program task. Uh, you can do almost everything using just this program task. You can create your own uh, custom themes and not just themes, uh, tasks, communications, and so on, just by using this program task. Um, uh, another, another thing that I wanted to show uh, you today is how easy it is to add a, an, an example that, I, that we have on our web page to your uh, building. So if I go back, I'm just going to check my um, flower. You can hear and see you perfectly. Okay, great. Uh, thank you all for sticking around uh, this long. It's not going to be much longer. Just have a couple of things to tell then. Uh, we can start with the q and if you guys have any questions. Um, so to get, like, like I said earlier, all the information that I showed you today and all the tasks that I showed you today, everything is available on our web page. Uh, if you go here under our knowledge base, you have every node that I showed today, every device, every task, everything has an, ex uh, an example. 
a step-by-step -step instruction how to use it, a little more, more uh, extra information about that device, about that task, and so on. So there's an abundance of information available already on our webpage, not just the knowledge base, but you also have, like I said, our examples library. So if I open it up, you can see we have a lot of different examples, pre-built examples for you to use. Uh, some of these have also been made by our clients. So let's say one client integrated another device. They can, of course, submit this uh, an example and we can then publish it and other people can also uh, use that example. So if I go here under tasks, at the end, I should have this human centric light example. So this is just an example of human centric light. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. So this is actually taking um, outside information. So your current sun information uh, to change the color temperature of your uh, lights in the building. So you would have this optimum uh, temperature uh, through, the, through your whole day. So you can simply, let's say, select this example. You can click download. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. You save it. And then you would open your configurator. You can you can select this tasks, and you can select this import configuration uh, function. So opening this, I can just simply find my human centric light. Of course, I have a couple of do downloaded already. I open it, and you can see that this is all the node that it consists uh, uh, with this uh, example. I click add, and I can add it under my tasks. Click add, close this. And now it, I know I, I can actually expand this uh, example and you'll be able to see that we have a pre-built example for you already done. So most of our examples come with a uh, pre-made uh, visualization panel as well, so you can use it. A lot of our examples are, uh, of course, are meant to be tweaked around. In this case, you can, you can control this color temperature uh, in a couple of ways. You can control it by percents or you can actually control the temperature by Kelvins. And you can, of course, tweak the settings. You can tweak the program task if you're dissatisfied how it's currently working. You can, of course, play around with it. But this is just an example to show you how easy it is. Basically, just a couple of clicks away, uh, an example on our web page. You can use it. You can, of course, I can now simply copy, again, this. Um, I can, I'm just going to remove. We're not going to be needing these anymore. Paste it in. And you would have a human-centric light example. Um, already made for you so you can actually play around your client can play around so like i said most of these settings are, are required or are advised to be tweaked around to satisfy you or your client but a basic example has been made for you uh, to be used in your visualization so a lot of our, a lot of the clients, a lot of people that request it, of course, is also your uh, data logs. So logging your information, let's say your consumption information, uh, any information that you might be uh, required to be logged, uh, can be used using our built-in logs. So uh, like I showed you earlier, we have a couple of different logs that can be used. Uh, I'm just going to be showing you an example how you can, how very simply it is to create a simple log, uh, how to add the, a graph to your visualization and then display this uh, for your client and all, also how to export all these values uh, if they are required. So I have a pre-built uh, data log fortunately here for us prepared. I'm just logging a, a temperature value here. Of course, this can be any consumption value, any value that you might be required to be logged. Uh, so this lock has already been created. And again, just like any other device or any other uh, task that we created earlier, I can simply drag and drop my log into my frame. And of course, it's currently here not visible, but if, if I open my client application, you'll be able to see this log displaying uh, values from a certain period of time. So you can either look like this or you can also open it uh, to have even more in-depth information from hours, days, and so on. So you can actually see how the temperature changed in Slovenia during the past couple of days. And all of these um, values can also be, of course, exported out um, for your clients to use. And a lot of cases, uh, people are required to have some kind of comparison or even a couple of logs uh, to be logging different values. So you can also, I can also select this log go here under objects collection 
and I can actually add another log in. So this is just another log that I have prepared. So we, we're going to have a couple of values here. I can change the color. And now if I open my configuration, you'll be able to see that we have two logs in one log, uh, comparing values, show, displaying values from a certain period of time. And you can also, of course, use this uh, in your visualization. So at this point, I would conclude this basic introduction to BOS. Uh, I showed you a couple of things, a uh, couple of features that we have, we support. It's just a glimpse of what BOS is capable of. There's much, much more that you can do, play around with, uh, and create your custom visualization, custom tasks for your client. Um, and Thank you. Thank you, Dave, mm -hmm. very much. Uh, for, um, for all the people on the, on the call, on the webinar, um, thanks for joining us. And if you have any questions, you can uh, right now chat, uh, put your questions in the chat. Uh, any questions about Comfort Click, uh, the uh, supply of the product, uh, range of the gateways, uh, pricing, support, all these uh, questions will be very happy to answer after uh, the presentation as well. And keep in mind that we have a few more webinars. So next week, we're coming back to hardcore KNX. Uh, we'll be talking about KNX topology and networks uh, with Ian Harding. And there will be a few more with uh, programming KNX programming tool ETS. And also uh, last uh, webinar about KNX will be about Dali Light in control. Um, uh, stay tuned because there will be more uh, webinars popping into this uh, to this um, series. We'll be talking also about nice uh, gateways, ga gateway controllers. Uh, nice being nice uh, um, Italy, the manufacturer of uh, um, high quality uh, gate openers and uh, controllers. Um, and also we'll be presenting you later the latest about. Uh, uh, Z-Wave, including uh, Home Center 3, working with uh, NICE uh, and through it uh, KNX. And uh, hopefully we'll have uh, uh, more time from Comfort Click to present more advanced features, particularly integration with third-party systems. So David, stay tuned. There will be probably more ask for more information. Um, do we have any questions uh, so far? So um, if, if you don't mind, I'll start it because this is the important thing. Uh, Neil, uh, keep in mind that you can have comfort click gateways ready to go. And those comfort click gateways are available from uh, DHS. Um, you can have a either DIN rail mounted gateway, KNX and Z-Wave and, and IP and, and uh, Modbus uh, gateway called Jigsaw. You can have a Colibri Modbus IP gateway called Colibri, and you can have a standalone gateway, Comfort Click gateway called uh, Grinder and Grinder Black, and also uh, Sledgehammer. So there's a, there's a full range of gateways already pre configured where the BOS is already loaded, and it's just the easiest way to uh, start your journey with, <clears throat> with Comfort Click and BOS. On top of that, if you really need and want to install BOS yourself on the Windows um, operating system, you can do it. You can get licenses uh, also from us, uh, depending on the number of users you, you may have. It will be obviously starting pack and additional uh, licenses. But in terms of the um, uh, minimum configuration required, I'll, I'll hand over to Matis if you could uh, say a few words about this. Um. Yeah, actually, um, there was a question if it's possible to install the BOS on the Mac OS. Um, no, that's currently not possible. We only offer uh, a licensed version for installation on your own server uh, for a Windows PC. So you need to have Windows PC in order to install the license, uh, the software itself on, on your uh, custom PC. Other than that, as as you said, you can uh, by pre-configured servers uh, from us. Um, but uh, minimum re um, recommendations for, for the software, uh, they are listed on our website, so you can check. Uh, I, will, I will post the link in the chat uh, for, for the minimum recommendations uh, about the server.
case? This is actually a very good question. We all know that um, there is uh, plenty of Zebra devices and they are coming uh, relatively quickly uh, to the market. Um, if I may, if I may, Matis, I'll, I'll quickly uh, say how it looks from from our yeah. end, uh, from Zebra perspective. So, Neil, we we have a great uh, comfort click gateways here in Australia. Um, they work very well with a variety of different uh, um, Zebra devices already available in in Australia. We work very close with comfort click to select the set of Zebra devices which are popular here. Work very well quality devices like, for example, Fibaro modules, Cubino modules, Aotech. Uh, all these products, uh, they work um, well, uh, very well. You can use all these features and integrate with them uh, with, with other protocol devices. Um, and we'll be working closely with Comfort Click on adding more. Uh, more. However, if there's any new device which is popular and good and, and would be great to have it fully, fully integrated and, and featured in Comfort Click, um, I had the Comfort Click is very, very quick to, to add them, and we had these situations before a few times. But Mattis, what would be your, your answer to how quickly you can integrate new Zedwork device? I mean, uh, it all depends on the, the request of the um, integration, because mostly if there is not a big deal to integrate, let's say, some missing command classes or some new command classes, that should be done pretty quickly. I would say a few weeks, maybe, uh, if there is a lot of request to it. Uh, but we are, in any case, we are constantly upgrading our software and the updates are coming out approximately once per month or two months. So um, basically, you can expect some new features um, in a short period of time. Um, yeah, actually, we support uh, mostly all the IP cameras that uh, have uh, streams for, uh, let's say, MJPEG streams, uh, JPEG snapshots, or um, RTCP streams. Uh, the easiest way to integrate the web camera is via OnVIF. Uh, I will, sh I can show you this. So the easiest way to integrate the camera is to just create a new um, IP camera node in the configurator. And then if the camera supports OnWith, which is basically all the modern web cameras, they support OnWith protocol, uh, you click here under device discovery. And then you uh, the BOS software uh, searches for IP cameras in your uh, local network via on with protocol and you just then select the camera um, you enter the username and password for the camera and then everything else is automatically uh, configured or filled in here and you can start watching it just by dragging and dropping uh, the IP camera node into your visualization and basically that's it you can start to see the the, the live picture here uh, let me just say that uh, the bos itself it's it's not a unvr solution so you should be aware that uh, the streaming uh, of the camera is not uh, meant for uh, i don't know recording or it's just to to have an overview in one app um, because it also takes a lot of CPU. Um, and what we're doing, actually, we are uh, getting the image from the, the IP camera, and then we are uh, decoding it and sending to our visualization via uh, HTTPS, and that takes quite a lot of CPU power. Um, so if you have multiple cameras on one screen, I recommend you to uh, disable this this uh, option enable streaming uh, because uh, you should use this only when uh, seeing only one camera so you could do like this um, to create a panel let's say where you would have 
uh, multiple cameras. So let's say we have four cameras. Um, and we would just put them in like this and then under the um, the main panel we create sub panels for camera one camera two camera three and so on and here we put the um, the picture of the whole camera of one camera but in the full screen mode and then we click on the first camera and we here select the panel link and we choose the camera that we want to show and now when you will uh, so basically here it's just jpeg snapshot so the um, the refresh rate is a bit lower um, and when you click on the the camera uh, it starts to stream uh, in a uh, higher uh, refresh rate so the, the the image is more smoother um, and that's the setting here enable streaming which can, in this case can be set to true um, so that was a quick overview of cameras I think this, as uh, David explained, yes, everything can be customized. So everything that you see here in this uh, panel and everything that you see in the client is actually the same on all devices. So uh, either is it a iPhone or is it either is it a Android device or whatever, everything looks the same. So I can emulate the, uh, let's say the phone size here. And basically it would be like this then. The, the content is uh, adapted automatically to the screen size. So you don't need to do different uh, uh, visualizations for different clients uh, or devices. You just do it once and then the, the content is automatically resized to fit the screen of the uh, device that you're using. Um, and I don't know if David uh, told you about the, our demo version uh, where you can also uh, use your phone to connect to it. So here under access ID, you just type in comfortclick.demo. I will also post later the, um, the details uh, how to connect and you can check the, our demo version on your phone also. So that's the, uh, to answer the question with the GUI interface on the phone. Thank you very much. Uh, no problem. Both of you, Mathis and uh, David for presentation. I appreciate really your early morning start, uh, your local time. And thank you very much all participants on this, uh, on this call. We'll be definitely coming back to more information and more in-depth information about Comfort League as, as we go. So have a good day, everyone, and see you next time. Yeah, thank yes. you. Thank you.